ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. There's a new book out on the newsstands now. It's called The Bible Codes by Michael Drosnan. This is a fascinating book, and uh, on page 25 he writes, There is a Bible beneath the Bible. The Bible is not only a book, it is also a computer program. It was first chiseled in stone and handwritten on a parchment scroll, finally printed as a book waiting for us to catch up with it by inventing a computer. Now, it can be read, he says, as it was always intended to be read. He goes on to say, that the Bible was originally dictated to Moses by God, contiguous without the break of words, so that Moses had to go in, I guess, and separate the words. A, a one long strand of 304,805 letters long, the Bible codes. Gary Stimmer is here to discuss with me Bible codes, fact or fancy? Mm. Well, we're going to investigate that today. Listen, Jr. this is hot news. Time, Newsweek, all the major uh, news magazines, New York Times, uh, many television, uh, daytime talk shows, etc., Oprah Winfrey, who knows who else, all covering this book by Michael Drosnan called The Bible Code, which claims that inside the Hebrew Bible there is a code to be found by equidistant letter spacing. That is, you come to one Hebrew letter, you count off, say, five, and then uh, you mark that letter, count off another five, mark that letter, count off another five, and then it develops a word. Or you might choose an interval of seven uh, or ten. Equidistant letter spacing is what it's called. And J.R., the things they're finding in the Bible, that is the Old Testament in the Hebrew, are phenomenal. But this is no surprise to us. Since uh, the late 1980s, we've been chronicling the, uh, the research going on in Torah codes. Uh, we uh, published in 1993 this book called The Mystery of the Menorah. Uh, one whole chapter in this is devoted to the fact that in uh, the five books of Moses you find coded, so for example in Genesis, at 50 letter intervals you find the word Torah coded. And in fact, in all five books, uh, or, or that is in Genesis, Exodus, and then Numbers, Deuteronomy, you find Torah. In the center, you find the divine name, yod heh vav -Heh, or Jehovah, coded in at seven-letter intervals. So, J.R., this is really nothing new to us. We've been following Torah coding, if you will, for quite a while. In the opening sentence of Leviticus, it's an incredible study. Not only ha did we uh, publish uh, a chapter in our book on it back in 1993, but Yaakov Ramsel has found the name of Jesus mm -hmm. encoded. Sure. This is incredible. And well. we offer this book, by the way, uh, called Yeshua. Yaakov Ramsel, Messianic Ram Rabbi, has been doing uh, Torah decoding, or shall, shall we uh, further uh, expand and say decoding of the entire Hebrew Old Testament, the Tanakh. And to give you a few quick examples, uh, <clears throat> for example, in Isaiah 7:14, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Yaakov Ramsel counts 17 letter intervals and finds the word Mashiach or Messiah. Uh, another example in uh, Psalm, uh, let's turn to this example right here. Genesis 3:15 is an excellent example. I will put enmity between <clears throat> you and the woman. Uh, he counts 69 letter intervals and he finds the name Yeshua, identifying who it was that would defeat Satan. And so Yaakov Ramsel finds the name Yeshua. He finds messianic uh, types of proclamations uh, associated with messianic scripture simply by counting equidistant letter spacing. And J.R., he's been heavily, heavily criticized by people who said he had no right to do this. Yeah. <laughs> the very people who publish books like this. Yes. On page 43, he gives some credentials. He, he talks about one of Israel's uh, great, uh, well-known mathematician, Robert J. Allman, who said, quote, the Bible code is simply a fact. He goes on to say the science is impeccable. And then, Gary, he says down here, I'm talking as an accountant. I've checked the books and it's kosher, said Amon. It's not just kosher, it's glot 
kosher. Tell us what glot means. <laughs> yeah, glot means the cleanest of the clean. It's beyond reproach. Glot kosher. Yeah. Israel's most famous mathematician. No slouch, by the way. This man knows statistical analysis. He's pronounced the code method to be flawless. Also on page 44, it says, finally on March 19, 1996, the most famous mathematician in Israel told the Israeli Academy of Science, quote, the Bible code is an established fact. And the interesting thing about finding the codes in the Bible is that they also set up the, um, the book called War and Peace mm -hmm. in Hebrew. Yes. And they tried to find codes in War and Peace. Wouldn't work. Yeah. Th there, was, there was nothing there. War and Peace, originally written by Count Leo Tolstoy in Russian, translated into Hebrew. Huge, thick novel. And they didn't find any codes in it whatsoever. That's it's far greater than the five books from Genesis oh, to Deuteronomy. Much bigger. And they found nothing in it. Nothing. But in the Bible, they have found very interesting sentences and words that Michael Drosnan simply says, though he is, uh, would we call him an atheist or an agnostic? He, <laughs> says, he says, I don't believe in God. Yeah, that makes him an, an atheist, I would say. But then he says, somebody wrote these five books. Mm. And somebody, wh whoever it was that wrote them, has an intelligence far superior to any of that on planet Earth. So he attributes this to some kind of alien presence or somebody who gave the five books to Moses, but he mm. does, he shies off from calling it God. Why? Why would he do that? Is it because he just wants to be accepted in scientific circles mm. and does not want to be looked upon as a, uh, as a religious um, <laughs> fanatic, shall we say? Well, I imagine to him this would be an admission of weakness. A strong man can get along without God. A weak man relies on God. I imagine that that's some, something of the nature of his thinking. You know, J.R., this is, uh, to me, a remarkable event in the House of David for this reason. Back in the 18th century, uh, uh, a sage said to be the most intelligent of all the modern Hebrew sages called the uh, Vilna Gaon, or the genius of Vilna, said, the rule is that all that was, is, and will be to the end of time is included in the Torah from the first word to the last word, and not merely in a general sense, but as to the details of every species and each one individually and details of details of everything that happened to him from the day of his birth until his end. End quote. Now that was done in the 17th uh, century. <laughs> That's amazing. And so the Jews know about the Vilna Gaon. They, they know that he said it was all here. This has to be a sign to the, to the house of David. Yes. I'm thinking of 1 Corinthians 1.22. It says, For the Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. You know, it's my thinking that now the Jews have their sign. Author Michael Drosnan is a Jew. Eliyahu Rips and his, uh, the men who worked with him on the Bible codes are all Jews. I think the Lord is giving them a sign. As I understand it, Eliyahu Rips was the man who first discovered this. Now, of course, he had like the Vilna Gaon to help him. Also, uh, uh, Sir Isaac Newton looked for all his life for Bible codes and missed it because he didn't have a computer. But listen to what he says here on page 45. We have always thought of the Bible as a book. We now know that it was only its first incarnation. It is also a computer program, not merely a book that rips typed into a computer, but something that its original author actually designed to be interactive. And then he says, a paragraph later, it is almost, this is quoting Eli, Eliyahu Rips, uh, the Israeli mathematician who first uh, designed the computer program. It's almost certain many more levels deep. It is almost certainly many more levels deep. But we do not yet have a powerful enough mathematical model to reach it, says Rips. It's probably less like a crossword puzzle and more like a hologram. We are only looking at a two-dimensional arrays, and we probably should be looking in at least three dimensions, but we don't know how to. Well, Gary, several years ago you mentioned the three-dimensional aspect of the Bible. J.R., as we've been studying the menorah in the Torah and all of the patterns in the Old Testament, it, it, it has become clear to me the Bible is like a hologram. 
It has layers within layers within layers. According to RIPS, at least on the first level of decoding, the 304,508 characters of the Old Testament can yield approximately 20 billion combinations uh, of information, informational bits. Now that will cover a multitude uh, of historical details. 20 billion. The work of Bible codes has been going on for the last decade. Um, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, God says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Seal the book, he says. Well, according to Michael Drosden and those in Israel who have been studying Bible codes, they suggest perhaps the Bible code that is found beneath the surface is the unsealing of the book. He also has a reference to the fourth and fifth chapters of Revelation where God holds a book sealed with seven seals and Christ takes the book from his hand and begins to break the seals and open the book. And he suggests that these two books may be the same book, the Bible encoded, waiting to that day when the computer was invented. That's um, really a fascinating way of putting it, isn't it? What caused Michael Drosden to really get interested in Bible codes? Gary, tell us about it. Well, Michael Drosden is a newspaper reporter, journalist by trade, and he had heard about the Torah coding, decided to do an article or a book on it. And one of the very first things he learned from Eliyahu Rips was that the name of the then Prime Minister uh, Yitzhak Rabin was coded in a section of Deuteronomy uh, along with the phrase assassin that will assassinate along with the name of the assassin Amir and along with the phrase in 5756, which in Gentile dating is 1995-96. And also the word Tel Aviv was coded in the same general area. So he had the name of the assassination, the place, the time, of course, uh, uh, September 1995, the beginning of 5756. And, and he was immediately alarmed, and through a friend, Chaim Guri, he tried to get the word to Rabin that he was about to be, uh, well, that, that he was in danger, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yitzhak Rabin is a very, was a very practical, hard-headed general. He said, nonsense, I'm going to do what I want to do, I'm a fatalist, I'm not going to let such things sway my life. And on the day appointed, he was assassinated in Tel Aviv by Amir, the very man whose name is named here in Deuteronomy. And uh, the reporter, Michael Drosnan, said that when he heard it, he, he was leaning against the, the, the uh, corridor, a corridor in a large building, and he slumped literally to the floor, staggered by the fact that, and he said, the codes are real. He really believed it at that point. Mm. Incredible. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes, it is. What he has found, uh, or that is what uh, Eliyahu Rips has found and Drosnan has reported, is really astounding. Some of these things that they have found, uh, uh, the, average, uh, the average Christian would probably say, well, he's not of my denomination, therefore I'm not going to pay any attention, you know and uh, put him in the realm of the nutcase <coughs> or someone sure. uh, of that ilk. But Gary, even though uh, he does not pretend to be a Christian, and even though Eliyahu Rips is an, uh, an Orthodox Jew or a religious Jew, um, does not mean that he hasn't got a brain up there or a computer <coughs> in his True. bedroom or um, in his study and can find these codes. It's, uh, it's more astounding than one would appear on the surface yeah. and cannot be dismissed lightly. We must at least give it um, a fair hearing. You know, it's very interesting. There's a phrase in, uh, in the Bible. I'm looking at Exodus 32, 16, where it says, And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. Encoded in what I just read at equidistant letter spaces is the Hebrew word mochishev, which in English means it was made by a computer. That's, that is coded into that phrase in the Bible. 
That's incredible. <laughs> that is wow. incredible to me, a a suggesting that not until the invention of the computer in the end of days, by the way, a very significant Bible phrase we'll be looking at, not until the invention of computer could any of this really be discerned. And yeah. God no doubt planned it that way. You know, it's interesting that uh, he has a chapter here called Atomic Holocaust. It's chapter 2 of his book. And uh, he writes, On the day Rabin was killed, I found the words, All his people to war, encoded in the same area where he had found, in fact, it was right above where the words, Assassin will assassinate, and in the same place as Yitzhak Rabin. And there are a number of things that he found here. One is Holocaust of Israel, and the date, 5756, which of course was 1995-96, and it all seemed to have been kicked off then mm -hmm. uh, with the assassination. And he, he goes on to talk about the year 2000, and he's, he's a little tongue-in-cheek here. He's not sure that uh, these things will occur before the year 2000 or by the year 2000. He also has dating that goes on to the year 2006, which we shall discuss shortly. But here's one statement that he makes on page 56. But only one other year was as clearly encoded with atomic holocaust as 1996. And it was 1945, the year of Hiroshima. It's encoded in this same passage. <clears throat> it's amazing. Hiroshima. <clears throat> you know, he finds, for example, in the, uh, in the passage from Numbers 29.9 through Deuteronomy 17.4, uh, where there is the plain reading in, in the middle of this passage that says, in the end of days. But coded through that is very clearly seen the phrase Shoah Atomit, which means atomic holocaust. Mm. It's coded right through there. And so what you get, looking just beneath the surface below the end of days, is atomic holocaust written in modern Hebrew. The word atomit, which is the Hebrew word for atomic, was not even known in the days of Moses. My goodness. There is something interesting about the word, uh, the number 5756 for 1996. Mm. Some years ago, I met a rabbi in Fort Worth, and I asked him to write down the dates, beginning with the sabbatical year of 1986, and continue on uh, for a while, and he, he listed 10 years through 1996. And I said, what does this mean if these, if these numbers became a word? And he began to tell me. Well, when he got to 57, 56, he said, it means all of you will change. Well, Michael Drosnin puts it this way. He says, the letters that stood for the numbers 57, 56, the year of the predicted Holocaust, clearly spelled out a challenge for us all. So he uses the word all because it is addressed to all, not just one person, but everybody. Mm -hmm. And he puts it this way with a question mark at the end. Will you change it? So since the uh, Holocaust or atomic war did not occur in 1996, Drosden suggests the possibility that he or the Israeli army or somebody was, had been able to change it or at least to push it forward for a while. And that's his hope, by the way. Being an agnostic or perhaps an atheist, his only hope is that is somehow this coded information is not written in stone, that it can be altered if we are warned by it, if we modify our ways. If He tried to warn Yitzhak Rabin, for example, to keep him from being assassinated. It didn't work. Uh, but he holds the hope that, that this can be changed or altered in some way. The phrase on the surface of the Bible, uh, for example, from Genesis uh, 48, 17 to 49, 6, there's a passage that contains uh, the phrase again, in the end of days. And crossing it is the date, 57, 56, which is 1995, 96. And again, <clears throat> We find in Deuteronomy 4:28 to 17:4 where the phrase "in the end of days" is used. Be akarit hayomim. Crossing that is the phrase "world war." So you put all this together and you begin to weave, as he does in this book, J.R., a pattern of catastrophe that lies just in the future, and he starts naming dates. That's the amazing thing. 
You know, Gary, it was in 1996 that we announced on our television program that military people, political analysts in the Middle East and Washington so on said Oslo is dead. Mm -hmm. That's right. The peace accord that was signed on September 13, 1993 was effectively vanished. Uh, it just died in 1996. Is this the beginning of the end?